تو بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم الحمد للہ والصلاة والسلام على سید المرسلین محمد الامین اما بعد Today I want to present to you something that will fascinate at least some of you or will, you know, uh, cause a lot of you to think about the Qur'an in a, rel- in a different way but in a very interesting and a very creative way. So I'm going pr- to introduce this methodology and then after that you dive into your understanding of Qur'an and its stories or its words or its paragraphs and its statements and you can in the comment section also uh, share uh, with everyone um, you know some of your own findings and some of your own discoveries so the quran uh, has you can use this methodology we can call the circle methodology in which what something begins with something ends back there so for example allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created adam from earth and after the episode between Adam and Iblis he ended up back on earth Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam from clay or from earth and man himself meaning him and his progeny we all end up back on earth when we die right so this uh, Tawbah uh, the Tawbah of Adam alayhi salatu wasalam for example is an example Tawbah is something that's like a circle you do Tawbah and then you realize you have mistakes and you do tawbah again and you do tawbah again and you do tawbah again and every time you feel like you made a mistake you do tawbah so it's like a, you, you complete the circle right you do tawbah and you're doing better 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 and then something happens and you fail yourself or you do wrong to yourself and then you do tawbah and you start again and so there's this cycle and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created this cycle in all things Everything from the way uh, the trees grow and become mature and then they uh, winter comes and they become dead and the cycle starts again. We ha- also have this, for example, in the story of Yusuf والسلام, where he sees a dream. يَا أَبَتِ إِنِّي رَأَيْتُ أَحَدَ أَشْرَ كَوْكَبًا وَالشَّمْسَ وَالْقَمَرْ رَأَيْتَهُمْ لِي سَاجِدِينَ I saw the sun and the moon and the twelve stars bowing down to me and then this happens, this vision, this dream that it's this surah starts with a dream and ends with the ta'wil, the explanation of that dream. That's how the surah itself ends, right? Where Yusuf والسلام, tells his dad uh, this dream in the beginning. So Allah says in Surah Yusuf, وَإِذْ قَالَ يُسُفِ لِي أَبِي This is how the story starts. So Allah says in ayah number 3, نَحْنُ نَقُصُّ عَلَيْكَ أَحْسَنَ الْقَصَصِ We are going to narrate to you or relate to you the most beautiful story. And then ayah number 4, إِذْ قَالَ يُسُفُ لِي أَبِي when, the fa- when Yusuf said to his abihi, Ya abati, my dear father, inni ra'aytu ahada ashra kawkaban wa shamsa wal qamar, ra'aytuhum li sajideen. And we already discussed this. And then how does it end? And the story ends with ayah number 100 and 101. Idh yarfa' abwayhi ala arsh. When he elevated his parents to the throne, right? And then they kharru lahu sajjada. And they all fell prostrate to him. Meaning Yusuf, that dream. وَقَالَ يَا أَبَتِي And he said, Oh my dad, هَذَا تَعْوِيلُ رُؤْيَا This is the ta'wil of that dream I had at first, how this story began in the Qur'an. Okay? مِنْ قَبْل And then, it ends with this dua, رَبِّ قَدْ آتَيْتَنَّ مِنَ الْمُلْكِ وَعَلَّمْتِنِّي مِنْ تَعْوِيلِ الْأَحَدِيثِ فَاتِرِ السَّمَوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضِ أَنْتَ وَلِيِّ فِي الدُّنِيَ وَالْآخِرَةِ تَوَفَّنِي مُسْلِمًا وَالْحِكْنِ بِالصَّالِحِينَ So I hope you can see here that there is a circle. Okay, and this is in stories, like I mentioned about Prophet Adam, and now I mentioned Yusuf, but also in history. For example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us how Bani Israel came into Egypt was Yusuf. How they left Egypt on, running when they went away from Fir'aun, Musa alayhi salatu wasalam. So you see this cycle. Adam alayhi salatu wasalam was the Prophet who prayed to Allah, who prayed to Allah the most. So Ibrahim, the Prophet of Allah, who Allah told to sacrifice your son, he is the one who's given the most children that are prophets and prophets and prophets. So kind of like this cycling. It's not just in the stories. It's also in the text. So, for example, let me just quickly show you uh, different examples of that. 
So we have, for example, Surah Al-Ma'un, that at the end, the last time, وَيَمْنِعُونَ Maun, And they prevent people from small kindnesses. Okay? And then, uh, the surah, right after Surah Al-Ma'un, uh, over here, if you look at Surah Al-Kawthar, in which Allah is saying, I gave, O Prophet, I gave you everything. Right? So, this, another example, uh, would be, uh, Surah Al-Ikhlas, or sorry, Surah Al-Nasr, right? Uh, Allah's victory to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and the believers, how Allah gave them victory. And the surah right after it is the surah of his biggest opponent who didn't want the Prophet to have victory. Tabbat yada abi lahabim wa tab. The Quran starts with dua. The Quran in Surah Nas ends with dua. So this is circle. also, you know, Quran is a, itself even in recitation, it's a circle, right? If you look at uh, even in terms of the verses of the Quran, in terms of uh, the verses, for example, "Kul huwa Allahu ahad," right? Say Allah is ahad, unique. Nothing is like Him. And what is the last verse? Ayah number four: "Lam yakun lahu kufwa ahad." Right? It says Ahad in the beginning, Ahad in the end. It says Allah is unique and nothing is like Him. And ayah number four is also saying He's unique and nothing is like Him. Okay? Ayah number two and three are also saying similar things. He's absolute. Allahu Samad. Right? He needs nothing and everything needs Him. Meaning, Lam Yalid wa Lam Yulad. He has no dependencies. He's completely independent. He didn't have a father and he doesn't have a son. He has no dependency. So ayah number one and four relate. Ayah number two and three. Four, four, two and three relate. Mm. Let me give uh, an example of uh, this uh, in Ayatul Kursi. Okay? So, if you look at uh, Allahu la ilaha illahu al hayyul qayyum, right, is uh, mentioning the names of Allah, just as at the end you have the name of Allah. Uh, لَا تَأْخُذُهُ سِنَةٌ وَلَا نَوْمٌ Right? And all of this is dis uh, describing the uh, uh, the fact that Allah doesn't get tired, nor does He slumber. And then the part here, وَلَا يَعُوذُهُ حِفْذَهُمَا And Allah does not get tired protecting his, the heavens and the earth. Okay? Over here is, لَهُ مَا فِي السَّمَاوَاتِ وَمَا فِي الْأَرْضِ And over here is, and for Allah is the extent, uh, whatever extends the heavens and the earth is for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So you can see this like ring all the way back to the middle of this ayah. There are 10 verses. So you can see how they interrelate as circle and circle and circle. So inshallah, I want you all to think about this. So now I want you to look at the Quran from this perspective. Where do you see the processes of cycles in the Quran? Allah talks about nature, how Allah talks about the stories, the Quran and its events and its histories. Where do you say this circle coming? Please share with me your thoughts in the comments section about this. Okay? Jazakumullah khairan. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Now I want to give you a few examples because Quran is the the peak of eloquence. Right? It is the nahnul balagha. It is the peak of eloquence of literature, of eloquence. And so this style of using a ring structure or a circular structure uh, in the in the in the tafsirs or the different books of Islamic tradition have mostly called it a ring structure. But this idea of a circular structure is well known in literature. So I'm going to share with you something that will help, inshallah, uh, put a perspective on that. Um, so let me. So uh, it says in this book. Uh, which is called Thinking in Circles. Okay, uh, A new interest in ring composition has lately arisen. This antique literature form is being discovered in documents that the scholars have known for centuries and have translated without recognizing that they have any formal structure. But I want to say Muslims have always known this in the Quran. And it has been pointed out by many of the different scholars. And uh, so there is kind of like this literary revival in this so i thought it would be interesting to put this before you because it's something an average muslim can also engage in to read different parts of quran and see how it makes a ring structure 
and we're going to look at a few examples. Many fine old texts have been disdained and respect disrespectfully mulled in an effort to get the sense. Anyway, so I'm going to give an example that he gives uh, from the Bible, but it's something that's common between Muslims and Christians, which is the creation of Prophet Adam alayhi salatu wasalam. So, there was no Adam uh, uh, to till the Adama. Okay, Adama means dust. Okay, God formed Adam from dust or Adama to guard and till the Garden of Eden. Again, one uh, other aspect of the uh, of this whole story of the human beings is to start. We started at the Garden. We're going to end back at the Garden, right? And so. Adam was not to eat. Now, you don't have to agree with this because I'm just saying that this has been part of literature from the beginning. And it is a major, uh, it is an aspect that is seen again and again in the Quran also. Uh, Adam was not to eat from the tree of knowledge. Uh, and of course, we don't consider it to be quote unquote tree of knowledge. Uh, the Adam is now Ish and Ishash united in perfect harmony. Then after that, they are naked. Uh, and f and and then uh, free from shame, meaning uh, he's saying that Adam didn't feel shame, okay? But subtle, uh, the Urum serpent attempts them to disobey. They become aware of the nakedness and feel shame, okay? So they they he says they were naked and were free from shame, and then they were naked and then they knew shame. In our tradition, it says they had clothes of nur, and those clothes of nur came off. I mean, just this is what the hadith mentions and this is what the Quran indicates as one of the differences in this uh, situation. Adam must return to Adama from which he was taken. And so this when we die we go back to the grave. Again, sujood, the idea of sujood doing sajda to the ground is also connected to this kind of like uh, Allah tells Iblis to do sujood and angels to do sujood of that part from where, meaning to do sujood and when human beings do sujood, we do sujood with the one, with the area or the thing, the dust that we were created from, right? So you could see this, um, <clears throat> you could see this kind of like a ring structure or circular structure. And it can be a many rings, a ring, big ring structure under which there are many smaller ring structures. Um, and so this is one of the uh, literary aspects of the Quran, its stories, and so on and so forth. So now you have all the stories of the Quran that you can begin to look, look at it from this perspective. And if something comes to your mind, if Allah gives you some guidance, if Allah opens up, gives you an opening, and may Allah give us all openings to be like wowed by this ring structure in the Quran, right? Um, so, you know, people can hardly write one story or one book in their life that has a ring structure. So if you have many stories with ring structure, many ideas, many aspects of history with the ring structure. Um, today, in fact, when I do Sutul Yasin, uh, I will be discussing the ring structure within Sutul Yasin in, throughout the whole surah. Um, but anyway, that's for my class later today. But I wanted to hand over this uh, creative challenge to my brothers and sisters. And do you find the ring structure, for example, in Fatiha, right? Do you find the ring structure in the stories of the Quran, in some of the sunnahs of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, so on and so forth. So uh, think about the ring structure and how it relates to end of times. And how do, that, how do they two relate, right? So uh, I'll end here inshallah ta'ala and leave it for you to um, let Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open your hearts to this creative uh, process and this creative idea and this creative uh, intrigue of trying to find the ring structure within Quran. Okay, and uh, oh, I wanted to give credit where it's due. This um, uh, this essay on the ring structure was given to me by a sister. So may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless her and guide her and fill her heart and her mind with nur. And for all of us, may Allah open all of our hearts to the understanding of Quran. Okay, uh, so assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.